So, uh, you know, it's such an awkward thing to have to decide, is it better to love or be loved? So I think I would prefer to, to talk about to love and be loved. I think that the reality is that everyone wants to be loved. Then we see that this word want indicates desire. And in, um, in spiritual, <clears throat> spiritual um, language, we can say that as soon as you get the word desire, it's like, ooh, you're not supposed to desire things. So um, maybe it's not a desire, maybe it's a need. Um, if you look at a newborn child, it's an absolute need. That child must be loved and cared for and provided for. But there is this uh, energy of love, especially from the mother to the child, that um, actually gives the child the sense of their value. And so to be loved is absolutely essential. And as we grow, we continue to benefit from being loved because being loved means there's guidance, there's structure, there's consistency, there is a certain amount of predictability. There's always unexpected things, but you know, if you grow up in an atmosphere of love and you know that no matter what goes on, you are loved, you are valued, you are important in the eyes of your carers, then this is a very, very important foundation. Yet there are many who do not get that. And far too many do not get that. And so this creates a wound in the soul, a gap, a um, missing dimension of life, which then impacts you for the entire rest of your life. And so we need to look at that because there are going to be a lot of people who are um, coming to the subject with that. And so there is this, this thing inside, which is, yeah, I, I need to be loved. I want to be loved. Um, sometimes if a person hasn't received healthy love, then you actually block it when it comes your way. Uh, because as you grow in an atmosphere of love, you also learn to receive love. But if you don't grow in an atmosphere of love, then you don't learn to receive love. And you also do not learn to give love. So it seems to me that receiving love is the first uh, key and the foundation for us to then give the return of that, which is to love others. And of course, while you are growing up from infancy onwards, um, there is this natural reciprocation that's an important part of the whole thing. So when you receive love, you give love. And it's like a flow, receiving and giving. Then you give me this topic, to love or be loved. And when we're older and we become more self-sufficient and we make decisions in life, generally speaking, People like to live in families. Uh, most people like to have a life partner. Um, they create children. It can be a, a large family or a small family. And then you have other 
circles of people that are part of your life that are very significant, your circle of friends, people that you um, do different activities with, your hobbies. Um, if you are a parent, then other parents who have similar uh, concerns for children, and that may help you to have support in um, your work as a parent. Um, because you're not just a parent, you may work also, you may have your parents to take care of, there may be um, many, many things are there extra, extra, extra. And so you, your amount of love that needs to be extended can be quite demanding, which means you have to have a source. And I think what I really want to talk about today is this way of resourcing yourself and of um, uh, knowing how to keep your inner um, fountain of love all the time sustained so that the demands of life are able to be fulfilled. And if you don't do that, then you have a hard time fulfilling other people's expectations of your love for them. And also you will look for some people who can love you so that you can then have some love that you can extend to others. And um, one thing that we do learn about in spirituality, which I think is really very helpful and useful to know, and that is that at the present historical moment that we're all passing through, it is said that pretty much everyone is spiritually depleted. And spiritual depletion means that your resource, your inner resources, which include love, are also at quite a low level. And so if you experience that you just don't seem to have enough love to go around to all the people who want you to love them and care for them and validate them and think about them and remember their birthdays and all the things that they need in order to feel good. And they look to you as the provider of that. And you may feel that you just don't have enough. And so you look for a source to, uh, to fulfill that. And if you look for a source in a person who's depleted, then they will not be able to give you what you anticipate from them. And they may even actually want to take from you, although you came into connection with them because you thought that they will support you and love you and give you that extra energy. But um, they're too depleted. And in the world we live in, there is this myth and assumption and belief that all you need to do is to find someone to love you and then everything will be fine. And so all the romance, all the novels and movies, and it's all about um, getting together with someone, consummating that love, and everything being wonderful as a direct result of that. But what we're finding is that this myth, this story, this fairy tale is not really the reality. But the problem is that we haven't really um, come up with a viable alternative that everyone is ready to accept. 
and and go away from that nice story and nice fairy tale uh, that is passed from generation to generation to generation and and wake up to the fact that actually it's not really like that uh, but there's something else going on and so one thing is we need to have a source which is endless infinite huge gigantic and there is no human being or dog or mountain or career or uh, any of those those things they cannot fulfill your um, need for that energy of love and sustenance i also call it sustenance because it is like a food for the soul and it is really the soul that is depleted and empty and needing to have access to the source and so in meditation that's what we do and meditation means to be able to go to the source which is unending and to commune with that source and regularly fill yourself so that there is enough to extend where you need to extend it and that you also accumulate more so that's easy to say but then we also have to look at the practicalities of it because if we just say it and then we have a nice imagination about what that means that may not be realistic so therefore we need to go into some details about it so uh, the, the first thing to understand of course is that everyone is a spiritual being who is operating through a physical body which could be young or old or male or female or different colors different races different cultures but whatever it is the being who lives and loves and is loved is a spiritual being and love is an energy of the soul and it is expressed and felt in different ways in the mind in the heart in relationships in so many different ways but it is a matter of the soul itself and so love is the flame of the soul the energy that makes life meaningful and worth living and and this is what everyone wishes for and wants not only for themselves but for everyone else but the problem is depletion and i using i'm using this word depletion but i think a lot of people i don't really realize that this is an issue spiritual depletion because you don't hear about it in the media you don't hear about it in school or anywhere really but um it is the case as far as i'm concerned that um study of spiritual matters invariably brings you to this conclusion that the problem everybody's problem is spiritual depletion but there is another problem together with that problem and that problem is indebtedness and so when you're in debt it makes you feel um worry and um, it makes you feel uh, that um, pressure and struggle and every so often when there is indebtedness and th this happens a lot in relationships people uh, will express to each other you know you are supposed to make me happy for example you, you might hear this expression that you know in this relationship you are in this relationship with me because you have to make me happy 
and then the other one will say yeah exactly you have to make me happy so <laughs> this means that there is this feeling that the other person is obligated to give you their energy and the other person or people will say no you are obligated to give me your energy so there is this you know like a, a demand for energy from each other which begins as attraction and it's all very beautiful and then after a while it turns into the opposite and becomes a cause of conflict and bitterness and so on in relationships and that happens whether it's parents and children or between spouses or um, any of the various different relationships that we have it can happen in friendships it can happen in uh, professional relationships and um, it leads to this feeling of um, disappointment betrayal um, that uh, you know i didn't sign up for this uh why is it like this it shouldn't be like this and and we become very critical of circumstances and all of this is to do with the fact that the soul is really depleted in terms of that energy of love and so the first thing that i would suggest is that we need to um, include in our life uh, time to fill the self with spiritual energy and that that has nothing to do with other people that is just me filling myself from that source beyond which is the supreme being the divine it is it is not coming from the material world it comes from a higher realm a higher power which is there but people are not so knowledgeable about how to access it and what you have to do to make sure that the channel remains open that you can drink from that flow of love and if there is something that blocks it or stops it, you need to understand what happened. How did this happen? And it has very much to do with this aspect of indebtedness. And another word for that is karma or karmic accounts or karmic debt or karmic obligation. So when we start to learn about spiritual matters and we learn about how to think of the self as fundamentally a spiritual being who's operating in a material world, so we need to really uh, make that very firm and very clear for ourselves that that is the reality. I'm a spiritual being and I'm in this material world interacting with other spiritual beings. And my action, if it's not based on love, I will get into debt. And if you don't have very much love, then a lot of the things that are done, the interactions between ourselves and other people, are for the purpose of getting love is giving and when you don't have enough love then you're hungry and so you desire that energy of love so when you see a person that seems interesting attractive beautiful uh, you resonate well with that person and you think i love this person but behind this expression i love this person is i want this person to love me because i need to be loved and so it compromises 
your thought that you love this person because um, you don't actually um, love this person like that. You are extending energy and that's it. No, you want something back because interaction between people is give and take. So ideally, in terms of looking at the laws of spirituality, looking at the laws of karma, when you come into a relationship with another human being and um, you want to create a long-term relationship, a family, whatever it has to be, but you have to understand sufficiently about love, about what is needed, so that the give and take between one another remains equitable. But because there are outstanding accounts of obligation, of debt, between spiritual beings, between souls, uh, you may be drawn to someone there's this magnetic attraction that draws you to someone, which is because of an outstanding karmic debt. And so that brings you together with that person. And then um, the circumstances create situations where if you're in debt to the other person, things will happen where you have to pay, you have to give more than you receive. And it can be the other way around. The other one is in debt to you, so they will be giving you much more than you give back because the nature of the laws of karma is that all of these um, discrepancies in the equilibrium of relationship need to be brought back to balance. So the law of karma is an energy that brings balance into human relationships. And so we need to gradually grasp this and see how it's playing out in our relationships. So if a person is doing good quality spiritual practice, good quality meditation, they're absorbing a good amount of energy, and that energy can be used to fulfill your obligations of relationship that you have. It can be used to um, give special care. Someone needs, you have extra, you can give extra care. Um, also, whenever a debt comes up for payment, you get into a situation and you recognize, oh, I owe and, and it will need me to give some energy for that. And then you have enough to give because if you don't have enough, you'll experience suffering. And nobody wants to suffer. You don't want to suffer in relationships. You don't want to suffer in any way, but especially a lot of people do experience suffering in relationships and they don't really know how or why it happened like that. And the more we study about spirituality and this laws of karma, laws of spirituality, the laws that govern human interaction, the clearer we are about what's happening. And we can read between the lines, we can see behind the veil of appearances to the realities that lie behind it. And then we are able to respond appropriately to the call of time and the requirements of circumstances. So these two things are important. Uh, the other thing that I think is very important is to really get um, a good sense of mutual benefit. Um, because when you enter into a relationship, you're discovering the person and discovering the energy that's going on and how close or how far or what's happening. But 
it's very important to uh, give yourself a personal ethical policy that if someone does something to you, you will reciprocate in kind uh, to keep the balance. If someone wants something from you, you will give, but then, you know, if they keep wanting and without reciprocating, the balance is going to go out of balance. And so then you need to hold back because the most important thing for success in relationships is to make sure that everything is balanced and you have like a social contract and most people don't sit down and write a contract of their relationships that's that's rare some people do but um, there is a contract which is um, to do with the nature of the relationship like there's an unwritten contract of the the obligations of a parent if you have a child it brings certain obligations which will last for a long time and you can't really check out of that because if you do you go into debt so you need to understand obligations responsibilities and you also need your freedom so i think a, a very important thing is to put a number one priority that i must take the time to fill myself with so much energy from the divine source that I do not look for that kind of energy from any human source or any objects or any career or anything, because none of these things will give me what I need. They will pretend to, they will make out that they will do that but i must not be deceived so this is very important because all of these support systems are actually insufficient inadequate and eventually you get in trouble when you depend on um someone or something that you're actually not supposed to depend on even though everybody believes that you're supposed to, but from the angle of spiritual uh, study, this is something we begin to really realize that do not um, have these expectations, do not depend because you will get disappointed. But you can depend on truth, you can depend on wisdom, you can depend on that source, but you need to figure out what is your relationship with that source so that the, the channel doesn't get blocked or closed. Uh, you need to make sure that your interaction with that source is also karmically correct. And, and a lot of people don't really think about that. But uh, as we study spiritual matters, we begin to realize that, you know, you, you have a relationship with yourself, very important. You have a relationship with other people. Some are very strong, some are not so strong, some are very close, some are a little distant, but you have a relationship where there is give and take, where there is obligation, responsibility and rights. And this all has to be balanced. And we have a relationship with the planet. Now, everybody is very aware that we have problems, which we call climate change. But the relationship of humanity with the planet has been, the planet has been very generous, but humanity um, has maybe exploited it, uh, wrecked it, ruined it, trashed it, whatever it ha has been, but we got ourselves into trouble and it's very, very difficult to really do anything about it. Although a lot of people have many proposals and plans, but it has reached a very difficult situation. 
And so it's a, a very interesting um, circumstance that forces us to be face to face with my relationship with nature, with the planet has been uh, maybe not quite right. Certainly humanity as a whole, not quite right. Um, and so if you don't love the world, if you don't love the planet, you will not take care of it. You just take, take, take. And when you just take, 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 that's not called love. That's called exploitation. And um, you will pay some form of suffering, some kind of deprivation, because the law of karma has to work out and equalize everything. So that is there. And um, then our relationship with the divine. So I think a lot of people, they really don't know how to think about that relationship. Um, what is the divine? And is there a relationship? How do you know there's a relationship? What does it mean? It's all quite unclear. But definitely there is a relationship. And it is connected with love. You see, if you love the divine, if you love truth, you will um, make that a priority in your life to live by truth, to live by um, honoring the divine and um, what the divine stands for so that you in some way are reflective of that. And this is going to keep the channel open when there is that love for God, for the divine, for the supreme being. Um, there is a reciprocal uh, response. As much as you love, that much you will receive. And so this is why I think in conclusion, our... Um, subject to love or be loved, I would definitely fall down on the side of it's more important to love. Because if you love, you will be loved. And um, sometimes you may uh, love and those who you love don't reciprocate. And then when that happens, the relationship will basically fizzle out because it gets out of balance. You give and they don't give back, even if you don't expect anything. But if the relationship goes out of balance, it will go to a certain point and then you can't give anymore. It's like it stops. And... Uh, they're not able to receive anymore. So there's a, a natural mechanism. And this is why ideally you want to keep it as mutually beneficial. And uh, when you study spiritual materials, you learn about this. So you start to introduce this into your significant relationships, your relationship with the planet, and you start to think about your relationship with the divine also in this way. Um, in order for you to be really um, filled with a huge resource of inner love, you need a lot of energy to develop that. And so you start off without much, but you give in your relationship with the divine and you open up that flow it's going to increase and when you um, are generous in your relationship with other people uh, with the planet with life um, it, it naturally will um, reciprocate so this um, is, is a very important thing to understand, this law of reciprocity, and to keep yourself in that. 
um, and and then you will find that the flow flows well and, and it doesn't block. So these are a few thoughts and let me um, invite you to sit with me for a moment for meditation and then we can um, discuss a little bit with uh, myself and Elizabeth and you may have some questions or comments but let's just take a moment to sit quiet and think about loving and first of all we have to go inside deep inside the self the heart the heart not so much the heart here but deeper than that the core of your being the heart of your spirit this is where your love lives and the soul is made of love, purity, inner power, stillness, beauty. Love is a powerful energy of the soul. Why you do what you do is because of love. First of all, you love yourself. You must find yourself. To find the self deep within, make contact with the self, know the self, and feel how much love you have, how much love you are. And of course, it is something to grow, something to amplify, to become vast as the universe. Feel your love. And also know that you have used a lot of that energy over time and you need to be replenished. There is space in your being to grow that heart. There are wounds in the heart. There are shadows of disappointments and betrayals. corners of emptiness. Open your heart and see the beauty and the scars. It is like that. And take your mind up above, your mind and your heart carry this beyond the everyday world to the world of light, to a region where you find the ocean of love. 
vast depth of feeling, oceanic, beautiful, pure love. radiating from an infinitesimally tiny point, the source, the one, the greatest love, unending, a huge wave of love, comes to you. Enters your being and fills you, floods you with light and love and peace. A nurturing, beautiful love of the mother, father, friend of the soul. Just take that in deep. And feel your heart expanding and growing. Radiating feelings of love out into the atmosphere. And then gently let yourself come back to the here and now the everyday world. Feel that freshness, that readiness to extend your generosity as needed. Om Shanti. Thank you.